Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming, an absolute pleasure to be able to speak to you. Um, maybe you could just kick off with a brief introduction to this, you know, incredible film. What can people expect if they watch it? As you know, it's, uh, it's a film set on the Turkey-Bulgaria border, which is not just a border between two countries, but also between Europe and Asia. Uh, we really wanted to make an immersive film, something that, you know, people could experience uh, and in a way it can ask uh, the audience questions. Uh, but it's, you know, it's, it's also a tough film. You know, it's one character surviving through a forest uh, and trying to find a way out of this, uh, of this place, which is huge and beautiful, but also very oppressive for him. And uh, yeah, we tried to make it as immersive as possible. That was, that was the goal. It's, it should be f uh, seen and experienced as an experience. And what was the kind of the original, you know, seed of the idea for this film? Um, why you wanted to make a film on this broad topic, I guess, kind of, you know, refugees and migrants, um, but then also kind of this very specific uh, lens, this specific perspective that you put the audience into? Well, uh, the idea came uh, around 2015, 2016, when I was working a lot with, with virtual reality. Um, but it was, you know, it was wonderful to experience uh, that time, that technology, but I also felt in a way very frustrated because in VR, you know, you lose control of the frame as you have a 360 sphere. But I still appreciated the, the effect that it had on the audience. So I wanted to, in a way, take what I'd learned in that, with that technology and bring it back to the theater, especially with the use of sound. Um, and that was the first, the initial uh, idea, how it came, you know, reading about what was happening on the Balkan route and trying to figure out how to bring the audience into that uh, sort of first, first uh, person point of view. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's very subjective as, as a style, but also objective, you know, and we wanted to, in a way, break the barrier that you would normally find in TV reports and documentaries, but still maintain that realism in the performance so that the audience can really feel like they're on the journey with the character. And what about casting Adam? Because, of course, a film like this is going to rest so heavily on, on, on that one person's performance, you know, minimal dialogue, very stripped back, but also incredibly demanding, even on a physical level. So no doubt you had to get that, that casting right. So how did you uh, decide on Adam and how did you work with him to achieve your vision? Well, we're, we're very lucky to, to find out about him um, through a short film. I saw a trailer for a short film that he was in and it was very interesting to see how he has this sort of silent movie face, you know, he's able to emote and express himself with very small details. And because the film has very little dialogue, uh, we needed somebody who could physically uh, bring himself uh, into, this, uh, into this really difficult place where we shot the film and, and have a physical uh, relationship also with, with the camera. You know, it was important that between Adam and, the, and our DP, Jacopo Caramella, there could be a symbiotic relationship and that they could almost find a, a rhythm, a breathing rhythm together. And Adam, I think, was great. He was very brave. He threw himself in the role completely. And he did all of his own stunts and also tried to reach into his past. You know, he's, uh, he's British, but of Libyan origin. So he spent some of his life uh, in Libya, some of his life as an asylum seeker. So it was important to find somebody who could connect to the character also emotionally. And he brought some of, of his own things, like that song that you hear him singing. It's a lullaby that his mother used to sing to him. So he really threw himself into the role. And, uh, and I think it's, it's a really outstanding performance. And how much of it is based kind of on, on real events? And how much did he have to research, I guess, kind of the specifics of what someone might go through in this situation, you know, or, or how much of it did you kind of have to fill in the gaps? Well, I mean, the whole, the whole script is based on real events. So we were lucky to have the opportunity and the privilege to meet with people who crossed uh, 
uh, who traveled on the Balkan route, and we took bits and pieces from uh, each of their own story and compiled them into this one character. And the type of work we did with Adam, I mean, he did his own research, and then we discussed a lot of, uh, again, mostly the emotional connotation of, uh, of, of his performance, because, you know, although it's a highly political film, we didn't want to infuse the film with politics, uh, the story. Uh, it, it, should have, it should be focused, that was the goal, on, on a character, on a human story. Um, and this is what we tried to do. Were there any moments that were particularly hard to film? Um, any real challenges or any moments that were kind of uh, the best for you that you kind of, you know, really um, felt like you'd nailed what you wanted to achieve? I mean, the whole experience was really crazy in terms of the difficulty of it, the location. Of course, nowhere near as difficult as the actual journey on the route, but just shooting in a forest is so complicated. You know, you have to maintain a light crew and light equipment. So every day there was a challenge, but we had a very passionate crew. You know, everybody who came really uh, wanted to, to make sure that the film could have that realism that we were looking for. And uh, I guess, you know, we, we tried to, to make sure that it was a mix between coordinating and letting also the location direct us in a way. Uh, but, you know, the sequence where he's climbing up the tree was very complicated because the DP was also having to being pulled up, uh, to be pulled up on, um, on the tree. But I guess the more we reached uh, the end of the story and the more complicated it, it became. But, you know, when we were able to get those long takes after a whole day of rehearsal and then just that one hour of, of, of light that we had and we were able to succeed, you know, everybody was really excited. And, you know, it, it just it felt very, very powerful to be there. You know, it was an experience also for us while we were making the film. Mm. And, you know, what do you hope people take away from watching this film? And, and what do you think the effect is of... I guess, getting as close as you can to putting yourself into this character's shoes, you know, like almost quite, um, you know, in, in the actual proximity of the camera to, to the actor. Um, do you think that that kind of captures cinema's ability to help us empathize and to help us put ourselves in someone else's shoes? Like you say, sometimes it can be quite you know, you can feel very detached just to read things in the newspaper headlines, stats, and um, becomes a bit meaningless. Whereas this, it's impossible to ignore. Well, thank you, first of all. Um, I mean, I think that was always the goal to make sure that by the, by the time uh, the audience leaves the theater or, you know, presses stop on, or pause on at the end of the film, that they come out with some questions and that, somehow the film gave, gave them some doubts about their convictions. So uh, we were always very keen and, and adamant about wanting to focus on the concept of empathy and constantly shifting that concept for the audience uh, by putting the character in higher and higher stakes throughout the story, uh, but also by playing with different roles, you know, also the character he meets uh, on, on the journey and the role of the forest, which is a real character in itself and how it interacts with him. You know, first it, it's, a, it's an enemy and then there are moments of the story where he runs back in, in the forest because then it becomes a, a safe place for him. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that, as I said, you know, the audience can really accept in a way to, to go on the journey with him and maybe it's not for everyone, but I think those who do, um, can get something that's maybe a little different. And it, again, you know, the film needed a structure and we picked and we chose a thriller structure for the film because it works to maintain that kind of rhythm and tension. Um, so I think even if some people maybe are not that interested in the subject matter, but once they watch the film and they're taken by it, then they can come out with something that can be meaningful also on a, on a social and political level. Mm. And if it's not too much of a spoiler, like, you know, leaving on quite an ambiguous note, you know, what was mm -hmm. perhaps your thinking behind that? Was that leaving the audience to kind of 
make up their own mind in a way. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I had an initially I had a very pessimistic take on the on the ending on the whole story uh, because I feel you know the situation uh, is not easy. Uh, but I was lucky to meet while we were doing research uh, on the ground in Bulgaria with a human rights lawyer who told me you can't afford to be pessimistic about it because people who travel on the route never lose hope, and uh, that gave me something about, you know, letting it a bit more open and leaving some ambiguity that I think is necessary because even if the journey is over, you know, even if he does reach the other side, even if he reaches, you know, a city, it, these types of journeys never, never really end, you know, it just comes with you. And I always say that it's passed on also through generations as well. Um, so, you know, everybody can decide uh, at the end, whether he's alive or, or not, or what happens to him, or who the people who he, whom he meets uh, do for him or not do for him. But I think the ultimate goal, again, is to, is to leave the audience with, with some questions. You know, I think this is one of the most powerful thing, things that movies can make, can, can, can do for the audience. And I was wondering as well whether you think kind of the timing of this film's release, um, you know, into the context that we're all living through right now, watching what's happening in the Ukraine, um, obviously, you know, a whole new refugee crisis, you know, unfolding before our eyes, if you like, um, mm -hmm. constant images on the news of people making difficult journeys. So do you think that it has, you know, it's going to resonate in a different way than maybe you even expected it to when you made it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's 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 strange and hard to watch footage of what's happening on, especially on the Polish border now. Especially since you know, uh, especially in the past few months, there's been there's been such a huge flow of, of people arriving, and now it's Ukrainians, and of course Europe has has a duty to to support them and to welcome them. But I I think it it's it very clearly shows that there's a big issue you know there's a conflict within europe uh in terms of uh, who europe wants to welcome more or not you know and i think this is something that you know has become so blatantly clear now uh for everyone to see and and for really governments to step up and and clear out the situation because it's showing that Europe is capable of, of welcoming people if it needs to, if it wants to. Uh, but this selection that happens uh, at borders, I think, is, is absolutely unacceptable for European standards, for the way Europe sells itself to the world. Um, and I think it needs to be tackled, not every single time as an emergency. You know, it's, it's a structural problem. It's a systemic problem. And uh, it's painful to see that there's still people who are stuck on, on borders now who are coming from Iraq or Afghanistan or Syria. So, you know, it's, it's, the timing is, uh, is interesting to say the least. And, and I hope maybe this can give the audience something even more to think about. Are you optimistic yourself? Do you feel like there's a better future ahead? where things aren't as dire for, you know, people ha having to escape situations in their own country and also having to make these perilous journeys? It's, I think it's hard to be optimistic, um, but I, I believe in the power of raising awareness. And I think, you know, if more people are aware of this, if more, if more people, again, ask themselves questions and, and question their beliefs, I think something good can happen. Uh, maybe it's it's not going to change the world. And I mean, that's why we made this film to try and, you know, even if there's one person who watches the film uh, in each screening and, and starts thinking about this more and, or in a different manner, I think it's, it's good. You know, I think it's positive. And, uh, you know, I think things are, are bound to change. I can't keep on going like this because it's just, uh, I think a lot of things are, are about to implode. And, and uh, so 
I, I can be optimistic and I try to be optimistic. Otherwise I wouldn't, I wouldn't have made this type of film, but it's, it's a serious, it's a serious problem. And uh, finally, you know, do you already have your eye on your next project? Do you know what you might tackle next in terms of a film? I do. Uh, I think, you know, there's, there's going to be some, some relation to, to this film. Um, I think this topic and this subject matter is, is very relevant. And it's really, I think, one of the most relevant topics of our time. And it needs to be spoken about more. And I always say that it's important to try and have different perspectives, you know, and, uh, and I think having uh, directors, writers, actors who somehow have a connection to this issue, to this topic is very important because uh, they can give a different take on what is happening. So it's, yeah, I'm, I think I'm, I'm going to continue on, on a similar path, but with a different character or in a different situation, different location, but with a similar approach. And uh, I'd like to be able to continue on this portrayal of, in a way, the immigrant experience uh, in Europe, but really around the world, because I mean, these stories happen on most borders in Europe, but you know, if you see what's happening on the US-Mexico border as well, or other borders in the world, the stories are very similar, although the terrain may be different. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that with me. Um, thank and you. I can't wait for everyone else to be able to see this film. I guess it's out this Friday, correct? 18? Yes, yeah. this Friday, Great. absolutely. Thank you so thank much. Lovely to speak to you. My Enjoy pleasure. the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. You too. Bye.